Hey, welcome to yet another episode of The Rock Fantasy Files. On this episode, we are going to discuss the Brian Johnson era of ACDC. Earlier last year, we actually did a, a one covering Bon Scott in ACDC. So if you're wondering why we're not talking about Bon Scott tonight, dig back in the archives on the channel and you will find that episode. And uh, I'm just, you know, we're just going to ask my guest tonight to rate their five favorite albums from this era. I think we're all might have the same number one. Maybe we won't, but it's interesting. There's so, you know, there's so many different albums you can pick from. There's some that I listened to for the first time, as we've been talking about other albums we've been visiting for the first time and probably since they came out that I haven't touched today. I was out checking all that out. So tonight's guest on the show, we've got Mr. John the Alchemist, John Gaffney here from Lair of the Alchemist and the Black Sabbath podcast so up in the up in the right corner. I've got Count Ralphus from Orange County and our local metal historian, and he's got his ACDC hat, which I should have dug out, yeah. but I didn't. Uh, Tony Dio's here. We got Crazy Levy because he's crazy about ACDC and crazy about <laughs> pinball. And he's from New York City and he's on a band called The Knobs and also runs the New York City Pinball Championship when things are normal. And hopefully they're, we're heading in that direction. And we got John McAtee, of course, one of our regular helpers on the channel and, of course, from the Mighty Incantation. And this is the last time John will be visiting us on the channel for a while because he's actually going on tour in a North American tour in the United States with the Mighty Nile and a couple other bands. And that kicks off what, in uh, February? Yep. On the third is our first show. So, so it's winding next right week's, in. Yeah, next week's just going to start getting crazy with practicing and stuff. And um, yeah, be great. You playing in New York? You playing in New York? Yeah, in the Gramercy. Um, nice. I don't remember the date, but it's that one's in March. It's towards the end of the tour. So we'll be, we'll be really um, in metal mode by then, you know? So anybody in the New York area better show up and yeah. buy a T-shirt and support the band. Buy John a beer or soda or something. Yeah, buy us <laughs> a buy us a vinyl for sale at the merch table? Yep. Yep, we're going to have right. vinyl and, um, yeah, a bunch of metal. But, yeah, buy stuff. It's been a long cool. freaking time since so you've been on tour. I got lots of bills to pay. Yes, yeah. I bet you do. <laughs> well, I haven't been to Gramercy since I saw Udo like three years ago or so. So I will definitely oh. be there. Yeah. yeah, I love that venue. The Gra Gramercy is a great venue. Uh, so I guess we'll talk about what we're supposed to be talking about tonight. <laughs> but not, you know, we could just talk about Incantation and John going on tour for a whole episode. I think that would be fun too. But uh, we're going to talk about, mind. we're here to about, talk about ACDC. And we're going to, I'm not going to go first, but I've got, what I've picked out, and uh, how about we kick it off with John Gaffney because he's got to run and uh, do something else pretty soon, and I don't want to cut him cut him to the end. So we'll kick it off with you, John. Okay, uh, ACDC. They're one of what I call my original six bands, meaning my favorite bands. Bands I discovered early on, bands that shaped my musical DNA. And ACDC was really the band that really got me excited about hard rock and, and heavy metal. I had was exposed to Kiss from an uncle who was only 10 years older than me, kind of in the late 70s. And I did like Kiss, but when I heard ACDC's Back in Black, specifically I saw a video of them doing a You Shook Me All Night Long. It was one of those, they weren't playing live, it was just them on stage, you know, playing along to the recording. As soon as I heard that, I fell in love with it. I was completely into it. I forgot about Kiss and ACDC became my band. So I'm a huge ACDC fan. Uh, okay, uh, my number five is uh, Black Ice. Uh, it feels like starting with Black Ice, ACDC is uh, sort of having a renaissance mm. of sorts. Uh, I remember hearing this and that period of like ball breaker, stiff upper lip, I, I kind of lost track of ACDC. I felt like Brian Johnson's voice had degraded. I've gone back to those albums in time and I, and I do enjoy them now, but I had sort of 
gotten away from ACDC. And when I heard this, it really drew me back in. The first thing I thought was, wow, Brian Johnson's voice sounds like he's back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like this record. There's probably too many songs on it. Should have been trimmed down a little bit. Uh, the double mix LP, is, John? Is yeah, a it's a double LP. Uh, I don't know what it clocks in time-wise on a CD, but it's got to be somewhere. You know, I mean, there's 15 songs on this album. So there's, there's, if they had trimmed this down to 10, it would have been a much tighter, punchier record. It's still a good record, though, as it is. Uh, rock and roll train. Uh, only in the, one of my gripes about later era ACDC is, is that the, the lyrics get really stupid. Uh, not that ACDC was ever Shakespeare, but at least during the Bon Scott <laughs> era, they were sort of clever and tongue in cheek and innuendos and stuff. I thought Bon was a great lyricist. I even like the lyrics on the first three or four uh, Brian albums. But only in the world of ACDC would you have a song where the chorus of the song is a runaway train ran right off the track but they call the song rock and roll train <laughs> because they have to have like every other song is, has the word rock or rock and roll in it. But anyways, it's a fun song. I like that. The whole first side here, Sky's on Fire. I like Anything Goes. This is kind of a zone that ACDC gets in during this era. These fun kind of lighthearted upbeat songs. War Machine is cool. I like Spoiling for a Fight, Wheels, Dezebel. I really like uh, Rock and Roll Dream and the title track is really cool. So Black Ice comes in at number five for me. Uh, number four is the most recent album, Power Up. I really, really enjoyed this album. Yeah. Uh, sadly, Malcolm Young, uh, no longer uh, with the band at that point, had passed away. Uh, but I just really dug this record. I like the mix of it. It's uh, the, one other thing about Black Ice. I always felt it was a little bit of a casualty of the loudness wars. It's kind of a little bright and hard on the ears. But uh, Power Up seems to remedy that. It's a nice warm record. Realize uh, re uh, Shot in the Dark is a lot of fun. I love Through the Mists of Time. Love the video for that. Uh, Witch's Spell is really, really cool. Yeah. Demon Fire, I love that. Uh, Systems Down, Code Red. There's just a lot of cool stuff on this record. So I, I really like this. It, it has me excited for what they might do next. So number four for me is Power Up. Uh, number three is For Those About to Rock, We Salute You. Uh, this album... Uh, you know, it's it, it feels like there's a lot of deep cuts on this album because outside of the title track, they never really played uh, any of this stuff after this tour. Uh, but I always love to put the finger on you. Uh, Let's get it up is fun. And the really deep cut stuff like Night of the Long Knives, uh, Snow, uh, uh, not Snow, Snow Blind. Uh, no, that's on a different oh, one. Uh, so, so it's just uh, COD, Evil Walks. It's like I, I did an ACDC uh, Brian Johnson deep cuts on my YouTube channel and Evil Walks was one of them. I love that song. So this is, a, this is a great, great record. And of course, you know, I was totally into them when this came out. I just absolutely love this. It's funny how you remember certain records can take you back to certain places in time. I remember the first getting this. I ordered it through the mail on cassette. And it came, I was out hunting with my dad, it came back, it was freezing outside Pennsylvania, the woods, came back, this was waiting for me when I got home, and I, I can still just picture myself, you know, hearing this for the first, the title track is, you know, a legendary hard rock anthem uh, for the ages with the canon and everything, so love this record. All right, the same copy two. you got back down on the hunting trip? No, no, I had it on cassette. When I was younger, I always bought cassettes, you know, yeah. because yeah, back then I didn't have a lot of money. And my logic was I had a Walkman, so I could Two take for one. Of course. Yeah, I could take the cassette yeah. with me. And if I bought the record to have to pay two or three bucks for a blank cassette <laughs> on top of the record, 
when you're 11 years old, two or three bucks is yep. business decisions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's a different, that two or three bucks was going towards my next ACDC record, you know? So. Yeah. All right. Number two for me, this is kind of the power age of the Brian Johnson era. Mm, absolutely. Look at the switch. I'm a big fan of this record. Uh, I did a in defense of video on my channel for this. And one of the things I talked about was, is I think this album suffered a little bit because of when it came out. For people who aren't in the US, they may not realize that after Back in Black came out, Dirty Deeds was released for the first time in the US. I don't know if that was all of North America, if it was just the US, but anyways, we had Back in Black, Dirty Deeds, and For Those About to Rock, all within the span of like two years. So when this record came out, I think there was maybe a little bit of a oversaturation, a little bit of a burnout factor on the radio and everything with ACDC. So none of these songs really got on the radio. But I just love this record. It's It's got so much energy, guns for hire, rising power, this house is on fire, bedlam in Belgium. Uh, it, it's just a ripping record, man. It just sounds like an old school, let there be rock, power age. They went into the studio. They just turned the amps up really loud and they just went for it. I think Brian sounds great on this. This is the last time where I... I after this, the ACDC lyrics would keep going downhill for me, but on here, they're still really cool. Uh, this is just a great record. Love it. All right. And number one, I may be tired of some of these songs on this record, but this is the album that got me into hard rock. Uh, I can still put this record on. And even though I think like I really don't want to listen to Back in Black or some of these songs again but whenever i put this record on it still kick kicks butt oh. it, it sounds fantastic it's one of the greatest hard rock records of all time back in black of course uh the title track hell's bells every song on it what do you do for money honey uh, the band is just so tight on this mutt lang's production yeah. it's warm it's punchy but Mutt Lang hadn't crossed over into that Def Leppard territory where he started using electronic sounding drums. I mean, maybe he tried it with ACDC and Phil Rudd took a swing at him and wouldn't let him <laughs> come in. You know, maybe he Hard suggested a drum machine and Phil Rudd took a swing at him and that ended that discussion. Yeah, he he dialed up a hitman. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he hired a hitman. <laughs> Sorry, Tony. I saw you yeah. trying to get that out. I had to beat you to it. <laughs> I mean, every song on this record is is a classic. I'm sure it's going to pop up on every on other people's lists. Yeah, save uh, some for us, buddy. It might, yeah, yeah. If not everybody else's list. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's it's a legendary album, in my opinion, the greatest hard rock record of all time. And hard the rock, best. it can be considered heavy metal too. I think I don't consider AC/DC heavy okay. metal. Although okay. the Brian Johnson era is when they got the most metal ish yeah. of mm. their career. To me. They're a fantastic hard rock, mm -hmm. the greatest hard rock band out Close. there. But to me, they're not heavy metal. And Lovey, uh, how many times have we heard the songs from Black Ice as uh, talking about ACDC and pinball heads? Oh, that's runaway. right. Uh, rock and Roll Train, uh, Runaway Train, Rock and Roll Train is one of these featured tracks on uh, the mode that everybody picks. On the yes, ACDC. it is. Because it's a that's quick way to get to your first multi-ball. Is that the ramp or the spinner? It's a great song. I think it's, uh, you know, instant classic. Uh, the rest of the album for me, like you said, it's a little long. Mm. Uh, but that's a great song. And honestly, all you really want out of a ACDC song al album these days is like one great song. And everything else is gravy as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> True. And they're True. usually pretty good with that. There's usually at least always one really yeah. good song on these last so many Brian Johnson era uh, yep. records. And uh, let's kick it over to another John, John McAtee. We're gonna put you in second place here and start you in second tonight. Okay, well, I mean- um, Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, hell yeah, rock and roll. Um, what are we thinking here? Um, well, for me, like, well, I guess I'll just go down with the top five i don't need to give my um whole story about it um yeah. we'll go with my five would have to be new one power up 
I think it's a really good album. I was super surprised. He froze up. He just put out stuff that would, it was just wasn't too interesting or anything, you know? So I was really happy when I heard it. I just, it just had all the stuff you want to hear in an ACDC album, you know, the, the tone of vibe, the songs are just, you know, simple, good rock and roll songs on the album, you know, heavy. Uh, yeah. Brian Johnson probably sounds better there than man. Yeah. than he sound probably since, I don't know, flying the wall or flicking a switch or something like that. So mm -hmm. it's really, really nice to hear him back. Cause he was just, he was getting too gravelly. John, you John freezing up a little, right? Is that everybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, am I? I'm sorry about that. No, it's not your. Give call. me a second. Oh. Let me try. Sometimes if I open, it might might be the might be my door. Sometimes when I close my door, it does. Give me one second. Oh yeah, that'll that'll affect me too with the wireless. Yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yep. Levy, I thought of that immediately when he picked up the black ice. I'm like, that pinball. How many times did you used to just hear that song? You know that song is one of the ACDC favorites now because of the pinball if you're a pinball player. Yeah, they all know it. I mean, it's yeah. just five ramp shots, multi-ball, it's, you know, and blue is appealing too. It all lights up blue. What was, the, what was the spinner shot? Spinner's that? War Machine. Another good song from that album, I think. Yeah, yeah, because I think that pinball was... In a good made. mode to pick. A lot of people pick that first because you can shoot shoot the spinner with your cannon right off the bat. And the reason behind that was, is I think when that out, when that pinball came out, that was the latest ACDC release, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was a couple of years old, but it, yeah. it was the latest, and they wanted to get on there. A funny, uh, quick, funny story about the ACDC pinball machine. They vaulted that, which means we released it uh, due to popular demand mm. uh, six or seven years later. Unfortunately, yeah. this version of the game was Phil Rudless. They had to, they expunged him from the game. I guess he was uh, out of the circle at that time due to his oh. legal difficulties. Um, but I thought that was kind of an unkind cut. I mean, wouldn't you rather have the, the Phil Rudd version of the pinball machine? Hmm. It's a collector's it's item. The now. bald guy in there. There's just no drummer, basically. <laughs> I tell you. you know? So one of the, he's back in the band. So if they vaulted again, we'll probably get Phil Rudd. And if someone's on here as a fan of ACDC and hasn't, got to play that pinball machine make sure you do somehow because it, it, great song list it's, too it's a great mix of both eras you know and i they and stern did very well with that i believe yeah one of their best sellers i'm sure all right so john you want to try again I, we could hear most of you but it would freeze up once <laughs> as you okay, know yeah you. just let me know if it, if it still sucks yeah. um but yeah cool. anyway my my five was power up like i said i just thought it was a good good yeah. sounding album I mean, for ACDC, it was really way more than I expected. I was, I, I wasn't really that excited for because I mean, I haven't just, I just haven't been excited for any of their albums in such a long time that it was just kind of like, okay, it's coming out. Then I heard it and I was just like, you know, I heard what I heard that first song was a shot in the dark. It was, I think. And I was like, oh, this actually sounds pretty good. And like I said, I just thought Brian Johnson's vocal sounded so much better than, um, they have, you know, in the last, I don't know, 25 years, maybe I can't remember. It was like a long time. I mean, it just started to get too, too gravelly for me. And like, like I said before, it's, I'm a death metal dude, but um, you know, it's still too gravelly for me. You know, it's like, it just didn't sound right. It sounded like, it almost sounded like, um, I don't know, some bad black metal vocalist trying to sing rock and roll or something on some of that stuff. It just bothered me. But anyway, on the new album, I think he sounds great. So that's my number five. Um, it's really difficult after that because there's only two albums that really hit me hard as a kid. The other ones are good, but mm -hmm. just they drop off a lot for me. And I would say next one I have to pick, which is, um, not really a go-to for me, but it's still probably my number four is probably Fly on the Wall. It's not a great album, but it still has some of what I like about ACDC and about the Brian Johnson era of ACDC on it. It's not, it, it, you know, Shake My Foundation or Shake Your Foundation, a couple songs like that, you know, are pretty good on it. Some pretty good rockers on it, but it just, 
in general, the album just doesn't really totally blow me away, but it's my number four. But I just, you know, it just from my personal opinion, I would have to say, you know, it's it's a good ACDC album, not a great ACDC album, but unfortunately, I just full albums by ACDC. I don't like a lot of their stuff mm. a- after a certain point. There's a few songs I like, and then a lot of it just sounds I hate to say it, but it just sounds like tripe, you know, to me, a lot of those songs, like they're just writing, you know, some basics, you know, maybe it's, um, you know, what I heard someone say before that they usually have one good song on their album and the rest is just, you know, filler. I've yeah. Tried. They feel almost filler. Yeah. I, I felt yeah. that a little bit going back. I think when a lot of these albums first came out though, I liked them a lot, but I didn't, I haven't gravitated to go back to listen to them as we were talking about motorhead iron fist the other night a little bit too uh yeah we didn't you know yeah year. that was another like, album where it had a great a great title track and the rest is kind of filler i mean there's some okay songs but just not no no real standout ones i mean mm-hmm. you're talking about great bands that cr- create amazing material and it just their standards so high you just don't want to hear um you know kind of generic stuff uh, but my number three, I'd go with Flick It a Switch. I, I like the album a lot. I think it's a great album. I think it, I don't think it's as good as the one, the two before it, but I think it's, I got a lot of play back in the day when it came out. I really liked it. I mean, I was a big ACDC fan. I, I liked, I, do remember getting um, Dirty Deeds Done Dirty Treat Cheap probably around the same time as that. And uh, I was kind of going back, you know, back to the uh, Bon Scott catalog a lot at that time. And that stuff is just a lot more charismatic, I think, than um, Flick It a Switch. But Flick It a Switch still has a lot of great songs on it. I think it's, I still think it's a, a good ACDC album. Um, yeah, I like it. I mean, I'm not totally, totally blown away by it, but I, I, you know, listening back to it, it's a good, it's a good listen to, I think. But um, I mean, you know, going to my number four, we'll say, uh, I'd have to go with Back in Black. It's a, it's not usual for me to pick a band's most popular album is my favorite. I'm just, I don't know why, but I just normally don't like a band's most popular album, but this album, every time you listen to it, it sounds fresh. Like John said, it just, you don't get, um, you don't, you don't get bored with it. Like hits you every time. Those songs are just so good. And the production is so good that it just, it just, it just kicks ass. I mean, uh, hell's bells i mean every time you hear it it's a perfect the perfect opener and a great tribute you know mm-hmm. song back in black you know i mean the whole um the whole album really is is spot on it's a great album i mean i first got this this is the first acd sound i think i got actually i didn't even have it i borrowed it from my friend he had an eight track of it and yeah. i recorded an eight track to a cassette am i am i locked up again i look <laughs> You're, um, we can hear you perfectly, but your face is locked up. So okay, we're all of it, so um, we can hear you perfectly. Okay, as long as you can hear me, that's what yeah, matters, yeah. I guess. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I had it. Like I said, I had it on H a uh, track. Well, not a track. I borrowed it from a track. I recorded it and I listened to the crap out of it. And then around it was around the time when um, uh, for those about the rock was it came out. I remember seeing it at like Caldors or something like that. And, um, you know, I just thought it was super cool looking and I, you know, knew back in black sounded awesome. So I picked that up and that ended up being my number one of ACDC. And that's probably my number one ACDC album of all ACDC albums. I just love like everything about that for those about the rock is just Mm -hmm. amazing. The um, production on it is so heavy. Those guitars are so heavy and, you know, I'm, always really attracted to metal bands and hard rock bands that have that heavy vibe to it. It's probably their most heavy metal sounding album. I would say, Mm, I mean, um, you know, inject the venom on that is just like, it's, it's just a killer. I mean, really the, um, 
evil walks, you know, just the way those songs start off. Yeah, they, they just right. a lot of them start off with just killer chord, you know, just like bomb, bomb, you know, that great. It's just a great, um, you know, just an ass kicker. And, and for those about the rock, the song is just amazing. It's such a good song. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty much one of the one of the um, best, probably one of the best hard rock songs ever. It's every time you listen to it, you just feel proud to be like a hard rock, you know, metal type fan. It's just, um, you know, but to me, the whole album is great because it has like a little bit of a doomy vibe to the album and a rockin' vibe. Mm -hmm. And I just I just love that about it. And it's it's pretty much been in rotation to some extent pretty much since it came out. I mean, even when I wasn't really listening to, you know, I kind of got more into underground stuff, you'd still be able to put on ACDC and it just had credit to it. Just mm -hmm. listen to it. And it, especially right. for those about the rock, it was just like, you know, it's just as badass. I mean, I, you know, me and my friends, we'd have like, you know, Venom and these other, you know, bands on back of our jacket and also ACDC, you know, on there, which really should be super far away from it, but it's actually, you know, it's it just so, um, so amazing. I don't know. I just, for those about the rock is, is to me far superior to anything that, um, Brian Johnson did with the band. Um, mm -hmm. you know, besides, I mean, I mean, back in black is close is, is really great. It's a, I mean, back in black to me is a perfect ACDC album, I think, but, um, for those about the rock is just like above that. It's like, you know, maybe 11, you know, goes to 11 or 12 mm -hmm. or something, you know, like Spinal Tap would say, where Back <laughs> in Black is like a 10 for, you know, so yeah. And I'm sorry that my video isn't isn't uh, great, but you still get the idea, you know? We can see, hear you perfectly and we can see you, but you're just not moving. Yeah. <laughs> All moving okay. parts stand still. Uh, black yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyhow. It's cool. It's oh, it's more man. it's more like a photo shoot of the show for you guys. Yeah, you're here. I mean, <laughs> we've we've done we've done interviews with just a blank screen, where we've interviewed some guests in them. So me and John have both done that, but it, it, it's just part of the internet and Zoom. It happens sometimes, as we all know. Yeah, hey guys, just so make it a radio show. It's sort of like a radio show. It's yeah, like a radio so, show. Or, well, we all got a radio. face for radio, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So I was just going to say to make it clear my it's what you know my my picks are power up is number 5 flying the wall number 4 flick it a switch number 3 back in black number 2 and a super easy number 1 for me is for those about the rock we salute you. Excellent. Excellent. You know, I'm going to shake things up. I'm not going last. I'm giving my picks right now. I don't care what anybody says. You do it. <laughs> it's your you show, show Steve. I'm the referee. <laughs> I'm never Go for own it. Own I'll it. do it quickly though. Uh, yeah, I thought about flying the wall. I actually like that album a lot. It gets a lot. It gets a lot of slack from a lot of people. So I would probably put that kind of number five because I listened to that album a ton. I got to see that tour. The only time I saw them in the '80s, actually, because I think I'm a little bit like John. I I liked them so much early but then i started to find out about slayer and metallica and exodus and every and things like that and i started going to more shows yep. like that so thrash I, gene, everything yeah, yeah probably yeah that probably screwed things up for me too or yeah. i don't really appreciate or didn't focus on those albums as much all, at that time. it happens a lot of things we've talked about in the 80s john where we go back wow. and revisit it even ralph can say it's like wow i, I overlooked that and steve levin yep. also you know the same way with that but definitely uh, me too so I'd say I'm going to have kind of like a tie, a fly on a wall for number five. And my other number five is an album that came out just a few years ago. Uh, I like rock or bust a lot for some reason a lot. I know Martin Popoff doesn't like it. We were talking about that. But I like the song Rock or Bust. I think it's great. I thought it was a good comeback album again where like, like John was talking about Black Ice. I like that also. Rock or Bust, I played the hell out of it. I thought play ball was like a total, like total poppy song, but I, I'm so, I said, I, they're going to have a big hit with this because every sport, every like NFL or baseball or soccer is going to be able to use this as like an mm -hmm. intro, uh, you know, almost like Metallica is give me fuel, give me fire for NASCAR. I don't know if that ever really happened, but it happened in my mind. 
Baptism by Fire is a strong track off that album also. And number four, I'm going to agree with John on this. And both Johns have this on their list. That Power Up album came out of nowhere. And I remember doing a year-end list for uh, for 2020. And I think Alex Folks might have had that as his number one album for Immolation. It's pretty close. Wow. To it. So did Pete Pardo have that way up on the what? list. And... I mean, Demon Fire, Witch's Spell, Shot in the Dark. This album sounds like it could have came out in the early 80s with ACDC. And I think it's better than, a, a, as I'm putting it on the list, better than a lot of those albums like Heat Seeker and, uh, and some of the ones that came out from those years that I listened to today. And I just had, a, they had a couple great songs and I agree with John uh, McAtee on where, and they just didn't have a full straight album, but uh Number three, I'm going with Flick of the Switch, Rising Power, This House is on Fire, of course, the title track, Badlands. I thought that was a great album. Number two, this could be number one, too, but I mean, this is like, it's one of the most iconic rock. I slash and call it slightly heavy metal. John uh, Gaffney will disagree with me, but that could be a whole nother episode. But it's like... Hell's Bells, it's Back in Black, Shoot the Thrill, Have a Drink on Me. It's rock and roll, it's hard rock. I'd say it borderlines on metal. So I'm going with number two on that. And for number one, I'm agreeing with Mr. McAtee. For those about to rock, just that title track. And then when you got to see the band live, that was one of the highlights of the show, of course. Oh, yeah. but the cannons. And everything else, and hey, Keeler. Um, I used to date this girl who was a uh, like a rigger. She was like a union rigger. Mm -hmm. She did rock shows. She was telling me the story when she did ACDC. She'd never done an ACDC show. I think she was just filling in or something. And yeah. towards the end of the show, she sees everybody on the crew start uh, covering their their their. Yeah. And she's like, "What are you boom?" <laughs> <laughs> she was half deaf, but uh, she figured it out pretty quick. And one of my about ACDC, they never throw away a prop. If you see a prop on a tour, it's going to be on the next tour. It was on last. Um, maybe they'll have a new one. So you they can don't never, throw them out. So, Levy, you can never get one of their props for your living room because we know you have Ronnie James Dio's sofa in your house. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm waiting for them to auction the stuff off. I was hoping maybe I could get, like, you know, oh. like Bon Scott's at Barca Lounge. Oh. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Well, going sure, back to, to keep me posted. So for those about the rock will be my number one. I mean, I'm looking at the list now. Inject the Venom, Evil Walks, such a great track, too. Hey, so, yeah, that's my number one. And I got to see ACDC one other time. I think Levy was there too. I got to see the Rock or Bus tour at the MetLife Stadium, is where the New York Giants and New York Jets play. In New that's Jersey. when Brian was still playing with them, right? Before yeah, he that was the first leg of the tour, and he, he that that big mix-up happened soon after, and that, that was uh, one of the biggest shows. I I'm, I don't usually like stadium shows like that because I think there's just too many people. I mean, I can be packed in the Gramercy. Or so that that was the old Giant or, Stadium. Yeah, no, it was the new yeah. one. It's the it new, oh, new stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life, yeah. New stadium, yeah. But same, it's same shit, different stadium. Are there state troopers walking around? There's bright I mean, light. It's, it's, a, it's like a I, weird I like rock and roll it. concentration camp. The first <laughs> the first stadium show I went to was there. That was Aerosmith, uh, Ted Nugent, Frank Marino Mahogany Russian Journey. So that was the old giant stadium in 1978. And then my last show there, I saw the Stones and Lovey was there too a couple of years ago. But uh, I saw ACDC, that was the first time back in that stadium. I've never been there for a Jet game or a Giant game. But uh, that, that show it, that show ruled. Anvil opened up in front of like 80. Oh, that's right. I forgot Ooh, about Anvil? that. It was weird. Yeah, they were coming right off of that movie that came out. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Anvil opened up where? At that show, at the ACDC show. Uh, no, that was actually not no, the No, that wasn't Rock or Bus. Yeah, that was Black Ice. Yeah, it was Black Ice. Oh, I didn't see that stadium. one, yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah, I think uh, there was like a soul kind of group, soul rock group that opened up for them with Rock or Bust. I can't think of, I can't think of the name right now, but anyhow. I guess uh, that pretty much covers my uh, 
Four. What are your five? Can you just list them out again? My five were Rocker Bus for number five with a kind of a tie for Fly on the Wall, just because I listened to it so much when I came out and saw the tour. I remember having the album flats in the windows of the shop and a display for that album. Uh, number four is going to be Power Up, which I think is, I would probably rely to listen to Power Up right now than anything else on the list because it's fresher and it's newer other than maybe for those about to rock. The so number three is going to be flicking a switch. Number two is going to be back in black. Number one is going to be for those about to rock. And you know what? The, the one and two could switch back and forth because Hell's Bells is such a strong song, too. And there's so many great. Yeah, you know, that back in black album is like the perfect album to put on for any kind of a bar scene, like party, anything. But you've heard some of those tracks way too much if you listen to regular radio. But it's, it's a to the regular radio much in 10, album, 15 years, and you put that album on, you're going to like the whole thing because you're not sick of them anymore. That was the perfect party album in the 80s, man. Just put yes. it on at any party, any time. Just perfect. Yeah. ACDC, it's like putting on a Black Sabbath record. It's the same kind of thing. It's perfect. Right? Perfect record. It's in there. So uh, who wants to go next? We're going to throw on uh, about we, Levy. Levy's our center square. You are our Paul Lynn tonight. So. Chopping at the bit. All right, I'm not really going to rank my five favorites because I guess I'm not really as versed in the overture as you guys are. So I'm just going to do the uh, five that I have. Um, you only have five records by ACDC? <laughs> I don't, you know. I, I, <laughs> what a I, I, let's just say I haven't been collecting music as long as some of you guys have. Oh, you've heard all of them. Uh, yeah, I'm more like, so I fly on the wall uh, as a cutout cassette when I was a kid. I only remember yeah. one song, Sink the Pink, because I thought that was hilarious when I was mm -hmm. 13. Um, but uh, I'm going to go with number five here is, is this gem, uh, Blow Up Your Video. This is a record I got. Uh, you can even still see the cutout. Uh, yeah. I got JNR downtown. Um, right when it was, you know, not too old, they were, they were cutting it out already. So I, I guess I was for music world, yeah. Yeah, JNR music. I love John it, was talking about uh, on Monday night yeah. on Hudson Valley Squares. He was talking about going to JNR Music World and buying records. Yeah, he brought his bought this one. Record. He said everything was five. Oh, really? They were all five ninety eight. Like when they were blowing them out, or back in the day? <laughs> no, back in the day. Back, back in the back, back in like yeah. the well, this early was like one ninety nine, and I didn't even like Maiden so back then. Cheaper. I bought like four Maiden albums because they were all one ninety nine in the cutout bin. Wow, wow. Um, but this album pretty much sucks. Uh, the production. <laughs> terrible it's really bad like i mean it's a record and the records all have the best sound and i put this on when i got my record player fixed hooked up to my my parents sold 70 speakers i got fixed we just moved yeah. my babe was like wow like, is there something wrong with the record player oh and, and i was like no let me put this van halen album on and there was, <laughs> it just sounds really bad um <laughs> these speakers all right you know i think they opened the with that i've seen youtube out of this rocket on stage it was like classic ACDC. They did throw that prop out. I was really hoping I'd see him get out of that rocket, but uh, they must have retired that. Um, besides that, I can't really think of anything on this. So album. by I, default, it's five. What's that? By default, it's five. Yeah, it's oh, you only have five. five. Uh, I do like sucks. the cover. I like the cover. <laughs> you know, he's got a he's got an SG custom there. That's kind of <laughs> he's got the old style TV with the digital uh, channel thing there. It was all about MTV and watching videos. Yeah, Just yeah. Blow up your video, man. That's definitely what, and it's very on brand. It's, you know, uh, Angus and his knees. Um, what's, the worst, what's the worst song on it, Levy? Oh, they're all pretty bad. I, I don't know. This and Dynamite. He's our own Chris Allo for this episode. I love it. Uh, some of these I don't even remember anymore. I remember, <laughs> uh, but I like these. Um, by the so way, Levy, Levy's going to give me the five worst ACDC tonight. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going through the five I have, and I'm ranking. Um, so that's number five, easily. Uh, number four is going to be Rock or Bust with the cover that I purchased, of course, at the world-famous Rock Fantasy. Oh, and Rock and Roll We Trust. It's Rock and Roll. Classy or... album. It's got a nice gatefold. Some, uh, it's got, you can see Malcolm's guitar is there. I'm mm -hmm. going um, that's cool. Present. Um, so Very you know, cool. it, was, it was cool when this album came out. Um, I thought it was nice. They went back to the uh, back to the short album, as uh, John the Alchemist was saying. Um, the songs are pretty good. I really like Rocker Bust. 
Um, and uh, as you were saying, play ball. I, I just, it's got that classic, even though Malcolm's not playing on it, it's got that classic ACDC guitar interplay, which is just so fucking good. Um, there's a song about a stripper in here, of course. I kind of like that one. Uh, Rock the Blues Away. Rock so, the Blues Away. I'm yeah, thinking. one of the very few 21st century songs you're going to hear that uh, endorses drunk driving. Um, I don't know, it's cool. It's, 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 it's ACDC. It's not their best. Um, but uh, but it's, it's okay. The production is so okay. Um, I, I really feel like on these records, you can tell. It's like if they, if they can't get it right on the record, you know, they, they probably do a pretty shitty job. It's not terrible. Um, I, I, like I got one, one question I wanted to bring up. I was, I was looking at that rocker bust because I, I have, I mean, I would blow up your video. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, did they do a video for that album? I don't even remember what I'm song. Sure they did. They must Heat Seeker have. and Best the Way That's I Like the way I Want to Rock and Roll. Yeah, Heat Seeker is a like good track. Singles. I don't even remember those. Yeah. Heat Seeker is what they opened the I tour with, either. according to YouTube. And this is a tour where um, I believe, uh, according to my brilliant ability to read Wikipedia, uh, <laughs> that Simon, uh, who's currently in the band, filled in for Malcolm, who was in the yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Oh, Simon. That's very right. interesting. Yeah. It was uh, nice, you know, no, it, sucks uh, that, it sucked Stevie that we lost Young. Malcolm, but it's nice that yeah. they could just bring someone in from the family who played with yeah. them before. Um, you know, ACDC, I kind of hold them a little different than, you know, I thought maybe the Stones should hang it up at this point, you know, without Charlie. But it's like ACDC, it's just the show must go on and it always will go on until Angus decides he's had enough. Um, yeah. But it's been a strange journey, that's for sure. It's, I never thought we'd see uh, Brian and Phil back in the band. Which brings me to number three. Um, I think it's all the stuff you guys were talking about. Uh, I also got this through mail order from Rock Fantasy. They kind of fine a little bit. Look at this. Look at that. What so, happened? You got it. Was the it there? Was like, yeah, the record was like poking through here. So, uh, brand new, uh, but, you blame that on the postal service, not on Rock it's Fantasy. It's okay. I left a bad <laughs> yell. Yes. I left a bad Yelp review for you, so uh, everything. <laughs> you left a bad review, Steve. You got to talk to those guys down in shipping, man. You got to straighten those shipping guys. Oh, uh, yeah. I, got couple, you know, I got a couple packages <laughs> lost in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, I think we can all agree, ACDC probably the ugliest band in history. Um, but <laughs> you know, and you never saw these guys. Uh, you never saw these guys embarrass themselves. You never saw them jump on the keyboard train. You never saw them like poof their hair out and like you know they never did any of that shit. It's like them, the remote, yeah. like Motorhead. I think those like kind of the only three. Like never showed up looking like Phyllis Diller, like Ozzy no. did. <laughs> Not Phyllis Diller, Ozzy. Phyllis yeah. Diller. Yeah, that's yeah. rough. Yeah, man. and it's like I think it's there's something look. really, really, uh, yeah. really yeah. nice about that. That these guys just continue to just do what they do. And as John McEntee and others have said, that can be a little repetitive, but. You know, much like Motorhead, we know what we're getting into. Yeah, we I, I, I agree with that. Like Motorhead and ACDC are going to give you an album and you know it's Motorhead, you know it's ACDC. Yeah. And yeah. you know it's not going to be terrible. There's going to be something. No, of there. course. Like it's, a, it's, um, in that, it's in that same vibe, man. Yeah. But one song you guys didn't mention on this album is Kick You When We're Down. I don't know why I like that. It's really mm. different for an ACDC song. And I love the guitar on it. Um, I'm not going to like riff with my face or anything, but maybe check that track out when you get a chance. Mm. Uh, just really cool. And uh, the production is great on this album. Uh, the record sounds really good. Um, and it's just kind of a cool old style. You know, when I got it and uh, my babe was here and I had to do the headphone thing, and it was just mm. like, case. Um, and that's what you were looking for in ACDC. So, so really, it's my number three of what I have, but it would be, it would be up there if I was really uh, new to things inside now like i've never heard a single thing off a of flick of the wrist uh, i would love to i need to find the record you have it look no. at a switch you had never heard look at a switch. Yeah, give me the record find me a, you didn't have any fucking acdc when i was there last weekend hey listen <laughs> no listen, acdc man. in the used bin no acdc in the used bin and no zz top from a to z i was there told. was a there was a there was a copy of heat seeker in the used bin uh, I well, mean, uh, 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 blow up your video okay. was there today. I saw. Maybe not. Okay, you didn't okay, that right. All right, take that back. Uh, you know, it's tough easy to get talk, dude. What vinyl, the fuck? But yeah, you know, it's tough to get vinyl in general right now. But I'm sorry. Supply chain issues. Boy, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but you would have bought. You would have bought. You didn't know you were doing this episode till this morning. So don't act like you were going to buy them all just to research for the video. 
<laughs> yeah, he woke me up with this shit. He's like, oh, a bunch of people. Wait, he's getting yeah. ready to drop thousands of dollars on ACDC vinyl at your store, Steve. But, you know. Well, I'll make sure I order them all in for you. What ones do you need? You obviously need. I need uh, flick of the fucking switch. Flick switch. of the switch. Do you, need, you need fly on the wall. Well, I don't need that. Um, you need. Uh, around in seventh grade was enough for that album. Uh, but also, also in rotation, like as far as. Can you get flick at a switch and stuff? Still like newer versions of that. I never saw them I when so. I was a kid. They repressed them, right, Tony? Yeah. Yeah, I think they repressed. Right now, it's impossible. I just feel like in the late yeah. '80s, you didn't see that album like in the stores. I mean, that's possible, right? Yeah. You know what's in there used today? There's a copy of Ball Breaker. Oh, you know what? I would take that just because I've never heard it, and I do like. Oh, I don't know. Well. Maybe I'm wrong about that. No, I think it was it was who made who made who was in there. That's what Oh, uh, the greatest hits. That's yeah, actually that's the first ACDC album I ever had. It was a cassette from the cutout bin. And Black Ice was a Walmart exclusive, if you remember. It was weird, it but was. it actually worked. That yeah. thing went like yeah. double plaque. Yeah, it did because it, I think it wow. was. Uh, All right, but enough digressing. Double. Now yeah. we're into the uh, now we're into the familiar stuff. Uh, number two is going to be this one. You guys mm -hmm. know it. Love it. Uh, my favorite ACDC cover. It's. Subtlety and simplicity, perhaps. Uh, I just I just really like it. And I'll mention maybe one of the one songs that nobody mentioned is Put the Finger on You. I love it. Excellent. Great, great guitar stuff, great lyrics that are very subtle. You can't figure out what he's talking about with his finger, what he's trying to do. And <laughs> the, the metaphors are so deep. It's like the, the finger is the key to unlocking your door. I, I'm yeah. sitting all these years later trying to figure this stuff out. Um, <laughs> all the stuff you guys were talking about and that's a great song uh let's get it up is good the whole first side i really love um well that side too actually this whole album's fucking good it's, it's great. great it is yeah and i never heard this one i just got this up in saugerties um maybe a year ago ten dollars not bad you got a good deal yeah, yeah. it was ten bucks i went yeah. back there this, last weekend after going to your place we were staying in saugerties mm. and they're asking 20 for for a copy so I got in under the wire. So maybe that's the problem. I, I'm selling my used vinyl too cheap. If I would have put it at 20, I still would add some selection for you. Yeah, I got done with mirrors for six bucks. Oh, yeah. Most every penny, too. That was another Dude, you, That's what you, you don't talk about the negative. You didn't talk about how many used Aerosmith records are. Like yeah, he has a show, and the price are very low. If you don't have that's a like, company, you're not in a hard place. Like the Aerosmith in Middletown. They played there like four times. It's weird. No, I was really happy to see John with Mirrors, and I got a copy of the debut for like six bucks. It was in pretty bad shape to cover, but the album. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Keeler. Keeler. Only Keeler would take somebody saying they went to a store and bought a bunch of shit as like an insult. No, you were like, <laughs> I went there, I didn't have any ZZ Top. I, just, I, need some Z, I need the first three ZZ Top <laughs> albums, and you don't have them. So work on that for me. Got a lot you... of Frank, there's a lot of Frank Zappa right now. I... Huh. All right, number one. I have, a quick, I have a quick question for you guys. I'm sorry, I, I had to do one. this. Well, for Aerosmith, do you guys any of you guys like Rock in a Hard Place album? Yeah, I I've not heard it. I will. I'll buy it next time I'm a Rock fan. He's got four copies for four bucks. Because I might be the only person, but that's like my favorite album by them. That's the crazy album. album. Yeah, it's not favorite, but you know, I really like that. Night in the Ruts. Yeah, Night in the Ruts. Ruts. Yeah, I just, and that's kind of a like I think Respo and the other guy are on that one too. Um, but it's mostly Joe Perry, but it's the album they broke up on. Um, well, we're going we're gonna to swing back maybe in a week or two. We need to do Aerosmith on this. Yeah. Thing. We haven't. So that's something we could yeah. do. Like, on All right. Ooh. But you know what number one is? It's, I'm not going to really add much. Um, oh, damn. I believe this is the 2003 reissue. Um, I don't know why I know that. Somebody, I think I bought it at a store and there's a sticker on it. So I guess the difference is it's embossed, but it also has this outline. Or do they all have that? Not all of them. No, no, no. Right, so I think this is a, original sin. Because, you know, Sony got their contracts. Um, and the cool thing about that is to celebrate, oh, it's got this cool inner sleeve here. Is that, was that on the original? Mm, no. Not like that, no. All right. Now, I haven't actually listened to this, so I can't tell you how it sounds. Um, I know all the songs by heart. My favorite song, ACDC song of all time, is Hell's Bells, and it's on here. And every other song is good, too. It's really the only ACDC album, except for maybe Highway to Hell, that doesn't have any filler on it. Um, it's start to finish, all killer. No yeah, that's what mine has. Oh, like it's that. different. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, yours is kind of cooler. 
This one has a bunch of text on it, I guess. That's like the epic Sony or whatever reissue. Yeah. That's what it was. Like, and um, just a quick, uh, quick story about that uh, reissue period is I was reading the Village Voice and there was a full page ad and it said, come down to JNR Records, buy the reissues and get a free ticket to see their March 12th show at the Hammer Game. Now, there was not going to be a show at the Hammer Game but there, and it wasn't going to be March 12th, but there was going to be a show at Roseland about a week later. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? I just basically blew out of work without telling anybody at about 10 in the morning, down on the train, went down to City Hall uh, and went to JNR and they have all Russians working there um, who'd been there for, and I'm like, hey, I saw a thing and I showed them the paper. I was like, so I'll get tickets for this show. If I It's like buy five, buy all the reissues. There were CDs, they were $10 a piece. So I think I bought five or six of them, including two versions of their kind of live album, like the two disc version and the one disc, but I had to buy all of them. So I spent like 60 bucks. Um, I got the reissues and she just writes my name and phone number on a post-it note. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, so, so you're going to call me? She said, yes, we call, we call. She was like this kind of 60 year old, like fat Russian woman. Wow. Yeah. And you know, a month later, you know, I'm getting nervous. I'm calling Janar every day. I finally get this one guy and he's like, look, everybody's fucking calling us. Don't worry. We'll, like mm -hmm. three days for the show, I get a fucking phone call. It's like, you know, you look at your phone and it's mm. a two number, you don't know what it is. I'm like, holy fuck. Man, this is, they fuck it. It's the fucking JNR chick and, or one of them. And she's like, all right, you, this, here's where you get your tickets. They're, they're going to be waiting for you the day of the show at Roseland. Um, so I immediately called my friend in New Orleans, who I had just been with, to get on a plane. We're going to see a CDC at Roseland. Uh, and I went there that morning and got the tickets. And, um, and we saw the fucking show and it was fucking awesome. So that's my story. I'm not going to tell you about the show. You, you know it was awesome. You don't need to hear about it. Yeah, but, cool. Uh, I just couldn't believe that actually worked out and I got these tickets. It's still to this day, it blows my mind. And then they weren't sold out. Like that people didn't just flock to JNR when this Village Voice came out. You know, maybe they didn't notice it or I don't know. Or they didn't yeah, who knows? But I, I guess they were giving away most of the tickets. What's you know, that? A promo show. It was yeah. uh, to celebrate the reissues and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I believe. That's pretty. That's a pretty awesome show to go to. Yeah. Yeah. AC DC at Roseland. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd yeah, be amazing, 2003, right? and they pulled out the deep cuts. Uh, if you want, wow. a bunch of stuff from High Voltage, uh, One Over the Moon, uh, Over the Moon. They did. Um, it, it was pretty cool, and it was like the diehards were there. You know, people got their tickets, and there was like. Dudes that I recognize still at every ACDC show, <laughs> faded Bon Scott tattoo, <laughs> you know, and uh, so yeah, that was pretty cool. So my top five of what I have would be uh, Blow Up Your Video, um, the new one, Power, I'm sorry, Blow Up Your Video, um, Rocker Bust, the new one, Power Up, uh, and then a close, uh, this one, and again, like somebody said earlier, it's fresh for me. So I'm um, listening to it more now than Back mm. in Black. Back in Black's got to be number one. But ACDC, you got to love Killer Band. And just to let you know, I looked in my database. I've ordered some of those ACDC records, and a few of them actually actually are in stock. So click on the switch. You'll be at Rock Fantasy next week. Brand All right, what's that going to set me back? You're going to have to come back up. All right. Come back up. The Rush, the rush uh, Pinball Tournament. A lot, going to be happening in february so maybe i'll come back up for that you're getting that game in february uh i should have it within a week and a half i think that's the brand new rush pinball machine rush they're pro, making, yeah. rush pro. they're making what keeler wants them to make it's awesome uh it sucks i have to get by gotta get our sabbath or priest game that's oh, like we need a sabbath before. sabbath before sabbath before all these other names so that's a whole nother episode i'm trying to set up an episode with jody from stern and we're trying to talk about metal and pinball and hopefully that's going to happen. If you wanted to wow. do that. I would so we'll, love to do that. We'll get you on that one for sure. Anyhow, we're going to. Hey guys, I got to jump off. So, John, it it's been fun. awesome to have you. And, uh, Rock on, guys. Thank See you. Yeah. See you, John. Hey, we got to breeze, breeze through it a little bit. So, we got three people left. Uh, we're going to go to Tony Dio next, and we'll go to Ralph, and we'll go to Joey Spaghetti Lee. And uh, then we'll wrap this one up after that. Welcome, Tony. Hey, how's it going, guys? Always good to be here. Um, I'm going to breeze through mine pretty fast. I got a few props to show as well. Um, I was really, really tied up whether I wanted for number five, trying to pick something. I mean, I, I've rediscovered a lot of the Brian Johnson's later records in, in the last few years. And uh, 
you know, I was looking up and everything that they've done, I think they've done 12 albums with him total. Everything that they have done is certified platinum um, wow. in the U.S. Wow. Uh, some, you know, right. double platinum. I mean, Razor's Edge is five times platinum. Wow. Uh, but, uh, I, I couldn't believe that, but they did have that big hit Money Talks that was on it. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they are the band that plays stadiums, not playing arena. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. But so I, I've got to go. Um, I, I was really about on the fence about "Fly on the Wall." Uh, I, I do like that record, but I, if I got to pick just one out of out of the, for number five, uh, definitely um, this newest one here. It's just a great record. Power up. Uh, it's a great comeback record. It's got some great songs on it. We've talked about all the good songs. Realize and uh, you know, "Kick You When You're Down" is great. Witch's spell. Uh, shot in the dark uh, I think uh, through the mist of time might be my favorite track on it and that video they've got it has all the flashback footage with um, you know old Bon Scott footage and stuff of course they got the little light up box here version as well it came out for the CD and uh, from there uh, number four uh, even though uh, Levy said he didn't like it I really do like this record uh, blow up your video and I guess it's because it was the first time I ever saw him in concert was on this tour. And I listened to this a lot when I first got it. And there's some cool songs on it. Heat Seekers, uh, a good song. That's the way I like my rock and roll. Sounds like the song that the their brothers, the young brothers, Easy Beats, did the, the song um, Good Times. It kind of reminds me a lot of that. Um, Kiss and Dynamite was pretty cool. Side 2 had some really good songs on it. Uh, Something for Nothing, Rough Stuff. Uh, should have been a single. That should have been the single from the album I, instead of what they picked. Uh, and Two's Up is a kind of a, a dark kind of song that I really like from them. Um, I got a couple of uh, singles from that album too. The Heat Seeker single here for that. And then That's the Way I Want to Rock and Roll, the 12-inch single for that. Uh, both of these have tracks that were recorded for the album One's called Borrowed Time and one's called Snake Eyes. And I think those songs are as good or better than anything that's on the album. They should have probably stuck those on and admitted a couple of the other tracks, actually. Tony, what do you think of the production? Am I, am I wrong about that? Was the style uh, it's, pretty? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very rock and roll. It's very raw. It's a raw production. It's definitely not Mutt Lang, for sure, you know. But then that's like going from, for those about to rock, to... Uh, flick, flick of the switch. switch, yeah. yeah the professional flick of the switch is the same way. Um, my, which brings me to my number three is I'm going to say Back in Black because, okay, I, as much as I love this record, it's just I have heard it so many times. I appreciate it and I love so much. It's such a great record. Um, I mean, Shoot the Thrill is one of my all time favorite Brian Johnson songs as well, but it um, backs up behind these two that will follow because I just like these records so much better. Um, look at Flick of the Switch is just a great raw rock and roll record. Yes. Got so many cool songs. I mean, uh, House is on Fire, Flick of the Switch, Nervous Shakedown is a great song, uh, Bedlam in Belgium, um, Badlands. Uh, I love everything that's on this record. Uh, I have a, I have a Guns for Hire, great song, I have a 45, and this is actually nice. a US 45 single here, like, Wow. box single That's um, cool. and have nervous shakedown did a, a 12 inch single for that with a couple of cool live tracks got bond doing um sin city on here and it's got a, a live oh. version of a rock and roll ain't noise pollution which is pretty cool yeah, so wait, look at the guitar he's got on that uh, record that is cool oh yeah all right. Got, oh, yeah. Now look at the one on my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, That's awesome. there we go. Yeah. That's, That's a 1970 Gibson SG, and it's fucking awesome guitar. It is, man. That is, is. And they put live Bond Scott era on the B side of that? That is cool, no, man. No, it's uh, Brian doing Bond, Bond Scott. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so number one for sure is the, like we said, sounds like their heavy metal album. Um for those about to rock, it's just it's just a great record. I just love everything about it. It's my favorite Brian Johnson record, period. Uh, I've got a couple of cool pieces of that as well. This is a Spanish version of the album where the colors are reversed. Nice. Wow, that's cool. Oh, cool. cool. They're going with song. the black thing again. They it's, it's, like that. Everything else is the same, same centerfold, gatefold, but they just did it in reverse colors. Supposedly it was a misprint, 
and they, I, they only did so many copies like this. And there's also a Mexican pressing that's white. It looks like a uh, flick of the switch. It's just wow. black and white. It's you know white oh. with the with the black ink on it, like flick of the switch. I'd love cool. to find one of those one day. And then I have yeah. a twelve inch single for for those about to rock, and a twelve inch single for let's get it up. And also a seven inch single for Let's Get It Up. Wow. Um, Are there any goodies on those? Used... What's that? Are there any goodies on those? Like um, I... yeah, you got um, um you got a couple of uh, live tracks recorded in Washington, DC. Um, actually, I remember that concert. They showed that Washington, DC concert from the uh for those about to rock tour. Was that um, at the stadium? Do you know? It's uh, okay. doesn't say it just says recorded uh Actually, de December of 81. Okay, I thought I said D.C. Probably I'm the sorry. Cap Center. Cap but I remember Center. there was a concert yeah, yeah. they used to show from the Cap Center on MTV. Yeah. But I, you know what? Thinking back, I think that was Flick of the Switch tour because I used to have it on VHS. I remember it used to record the Saturday night concerts off MTV. They, and it was one that was from, from Cap Center. But, yeah, from D.C. Lots of great shit came out of the Cap Center because they had the first uh, luxury boxes and they were wired up. So they got mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got quite a few bootlegs cool. from there, Van Halen and a whole lot of cool stuff. Uh, um, that was uh, my backyard venue when I was a kid. I never saw any shows there, but I did see the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh wow! <laughs> so you weren't in you weren't in heavy metal parking lot. I'm uh, not old enough. Yeah, I wish I'd been hanging out with some you in the spandex, man. That wasn't you in the spandex. I think the leopard David Lee Roth. And the funny thing, I knew some of these dirt bags who were like a little old. <laughs> If only they'd taken an 11 year old that fucking show, I could have been on camera. <laughs> talking about, we're talking about Fly on the Wall. I'll just show you these real fast. This is a 12 inch for Danger, which is a horrible song. I don't know why they released that <laughs> for a single. It's a terrible <laughs> song. And one for Shake Your Foundations, which is a good song. You know, th those cool. songs appeared on uh, Who Made Who as well. And Who Made Who was kind of a best of, but that was a really good record because it had so much stuff in Back in Black, for those about rocking, and you got those cool little musical interludes that they had their instrumental tracks that were really neat on it as well and who made who's always fun oh it's a great song very cool hey, you C cool video with all the angus youngs in the video i mean i've read something once about i think maybe it been pop offs one of pop off huh. books or something talking about the the casting for that where they brought all the people out to, to dress in the angus young costumes to be in the video or whatever yeah, eminem ripped his fucking concept off like 20 years later yeah was, yeah totally well, cool. Yeah. So that's mine. So that's going to be mine. So, we're, so like I said, uh, that's my top five. Awesome. Uh, let's kick it over to Ralph Tambora and then we'll finish up with Joey. All right. Uh, ACDC, big fan, love every album. Uh, the, my top four were easy. I knew right before, without even thinking about it. But uh, the fifth one was the one what, that I struggled with a bit. I, I I got to see them on Stiff Upper Lip and Black Ice, Wall Breaker. So I listened to those albums a lot when they came out. But um, for number four, I'm going to go with one I don't think anybody's mentioned, but uh, Razor's Edge. Good songs on there. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of the, like, it was like a big comeback kind of album for them, you know. And um, my uh, my number four, I got a little story about is um, when I forget what grade I was in, like, seventh or eighth grade but we had tickets to go see acdc on the fly fly on the wall tour mm. and for like Ooh, two months, signed. Was, yeah all oh, simon simon wright signed it nice uh, oh nice I got, he, he was at a playing with dio disciples locally and i i bring the album oh cool but um i i have a full unripped ticket stub from that show ingve mom's team was opening up on yes. watching out wow we, yeah you talked about the show. He he went and seen this show. I was like, I saw it. At, I saw it at Glens Falls Civic Center. Where did you catch it, Ralph? No, well, my story kind of a horrible one, but uh, so <laughs> counting the days down in school. Every time we see each other in, in class and stuff, we we're talking about how many days we got left. And then the day of the show, we were counting the hours. We'd see each other in between periods of school. Say <laughs> six hours to go. We were so psyched for this show. So on the way down. My friend's sister was driving us down there, and the fan belt broke about a half an hour from uh, uh, the oh, Meadowlands. Man. It was at the Meadowlands. 
Uh. And we all had our ticket, uh, you know, our merch money. So we, we begged her to just let us take a cab and then get her, she can get the car fixed and come find us, you know. Oh, and she felt responsible for these 13-year-old kids, you know, so she wouldn't let us do it. And so oh. to this day, I still have the full ticket stub. And oh. never, never did see it, you know. I got I didn't get to see him until, until the 90s, like uh, I think Ball Breaker when that, when that album came out. But yeah, so that's my number four. Hey, are those a concert bought uh, horn hat you're wearing? Yeah, this this is from uh, I think the Black Ice tour. Yeah, I have ones that weren't on an actual hat; they were just the horns and like a. Like <laughs> oh, the set. horns on the yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, had them yeah. in the other room. I forgot about them. Like, but, oh, that's a combo, John. John. He's going with the hat with the horns. Oh, okay. So yeah, I have just the horns too. I thought it was a whole hat with the horns. They must too. sell five thousand of those a show. It's genius. Oh yeah, and it looks great in the crowd when. The, <laughs> oh, at, at at one point during the they did uh, "Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be" and uh, "Hell's Bells," I think went together. And at one point, all the lights went out, and you heard the bell ringing for "Hell's Bells," and all you see right. these different horns. It was one of the coolest things I ever seen at a show. I love that. They're one of my okay. favorite live bands I ever seen. I got some of the uh, I got a couple of tour books. I got the Black Ice tour and the Stiff Lip Stiff Upper Lip tour book. Um. So yeah, then uh, my number three, I'm going with. Nice. About to run. The, I got the original vinyl, and uh, I got another prop here. It's my this is my oldest ACDC shirt. I didn't get to see this show, but wow, how cool that shirt is! Oh well, my god, that's so badass! Cool. Oh yeah, still fit. It's a parking lot shirt from for those about the rock tour. And you mm. know it's a bootleg. Oh, man. Because, you know it's a bootleg because the back had Bon Scott. Ah, oh, yeah. that was great though. That <laughs> that that image with the the devil up there and then the the cannon. What do you think yeah. that shirt's worth? About eight hundred bucks, you think? Oh. No, I'll never sell it. I can't. No. I can't fit in it, but my wife can still fit into all these shirts. So there you go. <laughs> That's good. Perfect. Yeah. So my number two, black and black. Made everybody's list. Oh, he's got the same copy I do. This is original. No, this is original because uh, I got this is my inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, that's the first press, right? Yeah, this is this. Yeah, it's like the original. And the back and black title press. is raised. It's embossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, and yeah, that's the, the one I had. Black is raised too. The words back and black is raised. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Another little prop, uh, Angus riding on. <laughs> Hell yeah! That a knuckle bone? Oh wow! Was that knuckle bones? Rock icons? Uh, this is just like a, I think McFarland toys actually. Oh McFarland, okay. Mm -hmm. I got another one too over here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this one's really cool with um, Hell's Bells. Oh yeah. oh yeah, that's badass. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, my my one of the first books I ever read. Remember these pocket books that the little oh, yeah. uh, paper. I I still got my Ozzy and Twisted Sister one, but they had like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Def Leppard. This is I think Ralph should open a museum of rock. <laughs> yeah, man, we could do it. Cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. The hell with the hard rock casino. This guy's got the stuff here. He he needs the building just to put the stuff all in. <laughs> Here's a book that Steve should read. It's Brian Johnson wrote a, an autobiography. Yeah. But it's rock and rollers, and it's um, it's all about yeah. cars, you know. And it's yes, he's a he, he's yeah, a big he's auto a, racer. He's got a TV show doing uh, just meeting mm. rock stars in their cars or something, right? Something like I that. actually have yeah. a friend of mine that has James window tinting in town, and he has met Brian several times. Uh, but Brian, Brian run, used to run the 24 hours of Daytona, like in the, with the IMSA cars. And he said he's very approachable. You know, he would, he would, he, this guy would go, was hired by IMSA to go down and uh, window tent, you know, all the, all the race cars. So he got to meet him quite a bit. Wow. We, which, we were trying to get him to have the pinball backlash side. That was around that time. And it that never happened. But. Oh, that's too bad. We were talking before the show started about, you know, when Axl Rose filled in. Well, I had tickets to see him at the Garden, ACDC, 
And about 20 days before the show is when Brian Johnson announced that he was going deaf. And it wasn't because of the loud, blaring ACDC music. It was because of the car racing bullshit. That was part but, of it, um, yeah. yeah. So, so I had my tickets, and then uh, and we paid a lot for them. Because I, I thought it was going to be the last time I was going to see ACDC. I ride. agreed, yeah, agreed. Getting older, and I, I didn't think they would ever put out another album after that, really. So we went kind of crazy. I, I spent like 500 bucks on two tickets. So then when they reannounced the show with Axel singing, I had to get my money back. I mean, that would have been interesting and stuff, but I wasn't paying 500 bucks to watch Axel. Yeah, <laughs> I was in the same boat with you. So I got my money back. And I mean, for 50 bucks, I would have went just to see Angus again, you know, but yeah. I, I had to get my money back. But uh, yeah, my number one is Flick of the Switch. Cool. To me, the, this is the borderline of hard rock and metal to me this is their heaviest album in their whole yeah. catalog and I, I think there's there's times on this where this is a metal sounding album i mean for those about the rock and, and back in black both have uh verging on metal they're they're the one band that's right on that line you know a little bit more than stuff you know but yeah flick it a switch i, I love that album it was you know and that's it cool did any did anybody see uh, Axel with ACDC and how was it? Yeah, it was great. It was great. You it was good... awesome. It was awesome. I didn't pay I heard for it. I, heard it. I think he sounded pretty good. And it he was fun. Song at the garden I heard really fun good. show, but I would have much rather seen Brian. But it was still did. neat. And they did touch too much. And mm -hmm. Axel Axel's a huge ACDC fan. I think that's why that happened. Yeah. You could tell. He even said, I think, when he was up there, he was like, "Hey, this fucking rolls." There's a drink, or you know, he paid yeah. the price. And look, I mean, the show had to go on. You saw history, actually. A lot of us didn't want to go, but looking back on it, it was kind of a historic. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen it. Yeah, I would have went. And, you know, it was like uh, it was like they didn't just get some scrub off of YouTube. It, like they they got uh, <laughs> drums with them before to play drums. They got their their nephew who played with them before to play guitar, and they got a big rock star. Everybody knows for his mm -hmm. own friend thing so they could have just went out out in the heavy metal parking lot and grabbed the guy in spandex well, that's not, yeah. <laughs> like, like Tony guy. In north carolina <laughs> yeah but uh, uh i'm glad i'm glad brian and phil are back and does anybody was... know if there's going to be another tour like what's going on well i'm sure they're planning on it they're probably just waiting to see the covid uh take the exit tour maybe uh, it seems like there's yeah tons, it looks like they're really there's tons yeah. of tours getting announced in north america right now tons of them I'm you know, surprised but are they going to go down? Are they going to happen? You know, I mean, a lot of them are. I mean, there's tours happening right now, so you know, it's crazy. Yeah. But uh, I saw Behemoth just got announced today. Arch Enemy. Oh no! Yeah, right. They're playing two shows. The others is opening up that one. Uh, where? Is it where Napalm? The Napalm Napalm's Napalm's that too? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's a strong tour. But anyhow, Joey, uh, let's get wow. you on here because we're running close to. Doing our next All right. episode. We could, we could, yeah, we could. Uh, no, yeah, you take your time. Quick, I already, I already heard quick. the other guys tell them have a cup of coffee or a beer. I'll be there in a few minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, when it comes to ACDC, honestly, what I mostly, of course, listen to is the Bon Scott era. I mean, uh, when I go to listen to ACDC, it's usually Power Age or Dirty Deeds. Um, I go that way. Um, I don't know the complete catalog in some of the later years. I don't think I've ever even heard Power Up. Um, Black Ice, I might have given one listen to. Um, I think the criticism of ACDC continuing to make the same record over and over and over again <laughs> is a pretty fair criticism. Um, you know, they're still great. It's still awesome rock and roll, but it just doesn't, like John said earlier, it just doesn't really... You know, I haven't been all that excited. Oh, new new AC D DC record. I don't rock or bust. I don't even think I've heard heard it all the way through. Uh -huh. yeah, I want to check out. I want to check out Power Up. I mean, you guys gave it some high I'm praise. Sure. So good. Definitely good. gonna check that, check that one out. No um, so well, quickly, my top five. I mean, in five, I would go Razor's Edge and Fly on the Wall for four. Three would be Flick of the Switch. Now, this album is, I think, their most underrated record. Mm -hmm. I think it's their heaviest record. I really like it. You can see there's a variation a little bit in the production. It sounds like just just more raw, just a little raw. raunchier. Um, the tracks on it are just killer. Um, 
It's also the first ever arena show I ever saw in my life. 12 years old, Nassau Coliseum in Long Island, ACDC and Fastway. And it wow. blew me away, <laughs> man. It blew me like it, 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 it's still uh, that cannon. That's a real cannon, man. That's like real like fire. Oil. That's like cavalry right there, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When that thing went off, the concussion through my body, I couldn't believe it. So that's a, that's a real deal cannon there. Um, so it was my first ever show. So for sentimental reasons, uh, my third favorite is Flick of the Switch. And I listened to it earlier, almost right before we came on. And it is so good, man. Guns for Hire, uh, R- uh, Rising Power, mm. even Nervous Shakedown is really, really yeah. cool. The title track, Bedlam in Belgium is amazing. Uh, a track on there called Badlands, where I swear I have to do a little research on this, but I think somebody, either Malcolm or Angus, might be playing a little bit of a slide. Like there's a slide riff, mm-hmm. almost like a George Thorogood kind of a thing. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. But um, super cool, man. Flick of the switch, totally underrated. I love it. It's my number three. I'm going to go back in black from my number two. What can you say, man? It's the perfect record. Yeah. Again, for sentimentality, I mean, who in the 80s did not put this on at a kegger and oh, people yeah. passed out and there's a Camaro in the driveway and you're <laughs> making out with the girl on the hood of the Trans Am and it's just, you know, it's back in black. It's the perfect I was at party. that party. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> right. When you got the done with back in right? black, you put on the, the first Van Halen, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, and I think Back in Black is one of those few perfect records. It's really perfect. Um, start to finish, it's just amazing. I mean, giving the dog a bone, you know, have a drink on me. Great, great record. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my favorite is, like many of you have said before, man, for those about to rock, just killer, man. The riffage on this record, the heaviness on this record. Um so so good man uh cod evil walks night of the long knives has this um kind of cool slow riff intro and then it's just got this killer like extra i you guys know the riff but riff such a cool riff and no, uh, I agree with everything you're saying, but I have to point out that your cannon is smaller than mine. Oh hey, you know. <laughs> True, I'm a CD guy, but uh, mine's just as big as yours, Lavi. Mine's just as big uh, as yours, Lavi. That's right. We'll there see. you go. There you go. Um, yeah. So my favorite, absolutely, is for those about to rock. Um, I'm definitely going to go back and check out uh, Power Up and some of these. Yeah, you got them, to, man. It's a great. Give them another. Give them another listen for sure. And I'm really excited to check out um, Flick of the Flick of the Switch. Oh, got- Flick of the Switch is so good. It's and so, I don't think so I've heard good. a single song off it. Of, so. of, yeah, of you're going to dig all, it. Good. Of all the Brian Johnson era ACDC, uh, Flick of the Switch, and for those about to rock, I go to fairly regularly. I mean, I will oh, and Tony, I'm going to listen to blow up your video again. Because it's been... Side yeah. 2. Check out all Side right, 2. Side 2. Tony's Tony Dio's EP collection that your collection a little 45 that's really proud it was super cool man really cool right. stuff but I mean, uh, all the shows I've done this has been by far the best show and tell ACDC best shit it's a lot of fun it's been a lot of fun for sure look at a switch super. I believe it's the worst selling album in their catalog is it every wow. one of us put it yeah. in the list it was wow. yeah. it's like someone pointed out they were competing against themselves well, yeah, true, true. They, you know, too much going on at once. Yeah. Black and Black was a grand slam. For those about to rock was a home run. And then Flick of the Switch. I mean, how many home runs can you hit? You're right. They were sort of competing. And I mean, they had a, and Highway to Hell was the one that was rolling into Back and Black, of course, with the, yeah. with the tragic passing of Bon Scott. But that was building that foundation. They almost needed a break, you know, like, Mm. like so much acdc but no one brought up uh was it thunderstruck or whatever that album is Razor's Edge. we got a couple of mentions Razor's Edge. Edge. It's Razor, good album. i mean the good song album. thunderstruck carries that album and i'll i'll tell you a quick story about thunderstruck and money talks there were two big money hits talks on. but yeah thunderstruck lived like i was hanging out there's a little bar right behind my store called players you know it's all kids in their 20s or you know young kids hanging out drinking and when thunderstruck came on 
they had a drinking thing. They would have you'd have to keep drinking until the ah, ah start again. It's like thunder when you're doing thunder. They you'd have to uh. drink, do a swig, and it was like. And that song lives on for like young kids, you know, you, know, you see people complaining all the time. Darren Pinball is putting out a dad rock or a grandpa rock. But I'll go to a bar <laughs> and it's all young kids listening to rock here in Middleton. And Thunderstruck's probably one of their biggest songs. Thunderstruck's ever. huge. And that, I, yeah, I had single. someone mention that album because I, I thought yeah. about listing that, but I don't like a lot of other songs on that album. Enough. I like about three or four songs on it. Yeah. yeah. Got a stupid well, I mean, cover also. Don't like the I mean, cover. Well, anyhow, I think we're going to wrap this episode up if everyone is finished. And uh, yeah. it was a great, fun episode. I had a, I had a blast doing it with everyone. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And John, yes, before we go, I want you to fill us in. Hey, how you hey, doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you. And uh, we had an awesome time at Rock Fantasy recently. What did you Thank buy? Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't meet up with you that day, but I was I in know, the bunker. I know we missed you. Tell them what you bought. I bought a vintage Pat Benatar vinyl Ooh, album. Times of passion. <laughs> nice. There you go. Today, and it's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, anyhow, so John, what, what? Fill on the viewers about the tour coming up, and uh, this is John's last episode with us. Uh, and for a so while, Mark, I'm not dying or nothing. No, the well, last episode here. No, he's not dying. You're going to be living even more. more. Instead of sitting in your in your room listening, talking about records, you're going to be out performing like you're supposed to so it's great right you're not going to see him on rock fantasy but you're going to see him in your oh, town you can see him in your town coming to your town so that's a co-headlining tour or is it a nile a headliner and you the support or yeah and i was a headliner we're support mm-hmm. but you know in my head we're co-headlining excellent yeah. you know or no in my head we're headlining how about okay. that no nah, i'm just, but um no, it, it's actually really fun to tour at Nile. We've known Nile for oh, great many man. years, so you get along with him really well, and it's just, it's going to be a blast. We're just happy to get out on the road too, and you know, the, the tour like to get to tour with our friends on top of it makes it even better, you know. So, you know, it's it's really an awesome um, thing. After you know, it's been this is the longest time I've not been on tour. I think mm. ever like. Between playing shows, between our last show we played before the pandemic until this thing we did last month in Mexico was the longest we've ever been without playing a show in between. So it was actually really nerve wracking going to Mexico because you haven't, you know, I'm I'm used to at least playing like, I don't know, like 20 shows in a year minimum, you know, so Mm -hmm. it went totally cold into that and it went great so now we're totally pumped up for us ready to nice. you know kill as many posers as possible ah, you know i mean posers you know yeah i mean we'll um, convert but, the posers we won't kill them yeah well convert, yeah um, i guess it's 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 kind of like an, an inquisition or something where you convert or die i guess you know like but, the walking <laughs> dead you need to bite them and turn them into <laughs> death and black metal or, because i i think tony Demolition Man told us last week he believes that black death metal, the sonic waves from it that you guys produce, will actually kill the COVID nineteen virus in the air. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah, I, I, I didn't catch COVID in Mexico, you know, so I guess you know maybe he's right, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're doing that, and then besides that, we have the um, the what's it the carolina chainsaw massacre fest that we're doing um, like actually yeah tony's gonna be helping me out with some stuff with that too um but yeah it's you know we're just really super excited about it we got um demolition hammer nasty savage uh you know assault. nuclear assault playing then we mm-hmm. have um what's it uh shed the skin and a lo- local band um false prophet it's Are old you? Class, classic band, El Rachar from the area. Then we have First Jason, which is the first Jason from Friday the 13th band oh, wow. playing, which is kind of like, you oh, know, uh, kind of wow. a horror rock band. I don't know if you guys ever heard Ooh. that stuff. It's a real no. trip, you know. But go ahead. What were you going to say? And you're also performing at that, John, with your band, with Incantation? Are you guys performing at the... At no the comment. No comment. No comment? Yeah, okay. So Boxer the- ongoing, Keeler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're going on tour next month, so we can't play, unfortunately, you know. Oh, okay. It, but, um, you never yeah, know. And, that, and then, um, yeah, we have a bunch of cool guests, too, coming out, you know, some horror guests. So it's going to be a total blast. 
And, is there um, a separate website for people to look at for that? Or is that yeah, just yeah, you could basically look up the um, you know, Carolina Chainsaw Massacre either on Facebook or mm -hmm. just that uh, we have the dot com of that, so you can just mm -hmm. kind of check it out, see what's up and stuff. And we're gonna have a lot more of announcements coming up with the next couple of months. It's just one of those things where it kind of you know builds up as it goes on, you know, trying to mm -hmm. still get a few more um you know, a few more horror guests to it too, you know, try to really make it a fun, good horror and kind of metal mix of stuff. Maybe, maybe I blast. could, uh, maybe I can put you in touch with Mr. Uh, Butch Patrick, or Eddie Munster, if you'd like him to show up. Oh may... yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. That'd be cool. Whatever <laughs> happened to Eddie Munster? Butch Patrick's a good friend of mine. And, uh... I, really? I can do Cousin It, John. I can oh, do yeah, Cousin Oh yeah, Butch it. is great. Yeah, cousin... <laughs> Joey's coming as cousin. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Cool. That'd be awesome. You can, Hell, yeah. be, you can also get Corpse Grinder to play that too, probably with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Jonas from Catatonia. But hey, I've got to wrap this one up. Uh, I'd like to cool. thank everyone guys. for thank their you. time. Stay on the road, John. Have yeah, fun, thank you. Man. I appreciate Stay it. Safe. See you guys. And yeah, I want to have everyone, all the viewers, put their favorite ACDC albums in the comments and uh, hit subscribe, hit like. Do all that crazy stuff. So uh stay heavy. We'll see you again soon on the Rock Fantasy. Take Pop. care, guys. Wow. See you, Tony, Joey, Keep the metal flowing, John McAtee and uh, John Gaffney. Thank you all for watching tonight.